I Toro. Used for jump guards. How quickly does the media deplete? Zoa I won. Uh, as well as this guy right here. Yes, this is still the $50 Peko clan. Alright guys, today we're getting a little fancy. Bro, what do I see today? Blue Xenius, all closed up, pissed off. Zoas, completely wiped out. That Aptasia eating foul fish right there is 99.9% .9 snacking our soft corals and he just kind of turned overnight. That little dude, going back to Refugium at 135 and I will be rehoming him. Oh, this fish jumps surprisingly high. Yep, uh, you know the poop they got? Probably Toro. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. Really lively, lived a really nice life for the last three weeks at this point until he turned broke and started munching on the soft corals. So back to the refugium, he goes to 135. Today we're gonna do a fun little DIY project. So in one of my previous videos, I added a flasher rest who has acclimated to this tank really well, but the first four to five days was really dicey as the male Lyotel Amphius kept dive bombing him, keeping him in this rock. One of the comments I got from that is to get an acclimation box to keep the new fish in for a couple days. This way the fish gets to know each other well before the new fish get introduced, so it's just not like a random fish plop into a established crew and get beat up. And to be honest, I did not expect anybody to give that flasher Rest any issue because there's no other rest in this tank. Little did I know that the lead tail MVS female could be so aggressive. Following that conversation, somebody actually pointed out saying that he rests somewhere, the new fish actually released some kind of stress hormone. Ah, <laughs> oh, I'm releasing some stress hormone right now. Causes the other fish to attack it. So it's best for the new fish to kind of just calm down for a couple days so that it no longer release a stress hormone like I am right now uh, before releasing him to the tank with the other fish. So as a result, I started looking into acclimation box and man, they are pricey. They range from like $50-ish, I'm looking for large ones, uh, all the way up to like $100 plus dollars. Looking around the house, I do have some of these uh, pre-cut egg crakes I got. I think it's for my Axolotl tank. Just a side note, my Axolotls are getting huge. I need to show you guys them uh, one of these days. One hour later. All right, guys, here what I have so far. I have zip-tied the uh, egg crates together and then I ran out of egg crates. So I got this extra mesh I got that uh, was used for jump guards. So I cut it to size and it just so happened that these kind of egg crates uh, actually have little tabs for connecting different egg crates together. So it works out, it'll hold the mesh in place. So this will be kind of my not so convenient trap door up top. I could potentially just sink the whole thing to the bottom and forget about mounting it to the side. But I feel like it would be nice to have the option to just hold it in place. So I'm thinking about using magnets. I have a lot of those uh, KNJ epoxy coated magnet. I can probably super glue to the side and it should be able to hold. Length is a foot, width is six inches. The height is also six inches. It actually matches a lot of the acclimation box on the markets. Um, ideally, I would love to have like a larger one, maybe a taller one, maybe 10 inches or even 12 inches, 12 by 12 by six, that'd be nice. But again, this is just gonna be short term, three to five days in here. I'm gonna add a uh, PVC elbow in there as well. I remember reading somewhere that uh, for PVC to use for the fish, use PVC elbows. Don't use the pipe because the pipe may roll and crush things. Um, again, this is just something that I read. As you know, I'm an um, inappropriate reefer. I have not really set up a quarantine tank. So that's just something that I read online. All right guys, I know you guys are all super impressed by this amazing DIY acclimation box. Not really, but uh, in my hand, there's another item that I could potentially DIY, but I think I've met my DIY quota. I'm gonna buy something that's pre-made. Low CO2 has been plaguing my tank for a long time. I tried pooling outside air in, but during winter, it's just not feasible of cracking open the door and also drilling a hole through the wall. Emily's gonna absolutely murder me. So to save my life, I went ahead and bought this ice cap CO2 scrubber that I've been eyeing for a long time. It's about $120, I think. Don't tell Emily. And I also bought some of these media. Uh, these media I got from ice cap as well. I think they go for, was it like 15 bucks a pack? I need two bags, 4.4 uh, pounds to really load up the ice cap uh, CO2 scrubber. Folks tell me that I could buy these CO2 scrubbing materials somewhere else for in bulk for a lot cheaper. But I just wanna get these first, test it out, make sure it works, then we'll invest more money in these CO2 uh, media. Oh, look at this. I'm Unboxing within the unboxing. Inception? Oh, that's nice. It came with uh, some CO2 absorbent media here as well. Oh man, this is gonna be a messy unboxing. Dang it. All right, here we go. I hope I did my math right. This should fit perfectly behind my 
uh, freshwater reservoir. All right, I think that's it. Really, really simple contraption, basically just a chamber. And you get uh, two pipes. So this unit, I believe, can either sit on the ground or hang off of the sump. I guess that kind of works. The door definitely can shut, so that is great. Although it's looking a little messy like this. What if they hang it here like this? Oh, this works even better. I like this. While the instruction did not specifically set to add water to the uh, CO2 scrubber by IceCap, the BLS version of the CO2 scrubber did recommend adding uh, one tablespoon of uh, old water. And just from reading from forums, it seems like having the media moist or just the air being moist really seems to help. So I'm gonna just add a uh, tablespoon full of uh, our DI water here at the bottom. Funnel did not work out too well. Sometimes you get a little bit too fancy and you trip yourself up. All right, so there's one bag of these guys, probably one kg if I have to guess, comparing to uh, these packs. So I think I may not be able to jam both in. Maybe, well, actually, let me see. So I have this much left. I'm probably put it in a Ziploc bag. I screwed the cap back on and that's pretty much it. I mean, there's mo no moving parts. It's a really, really simple system. To be honest, it's slightly overpriced. Yeah, $120 for something like this. It's really, really simple. All right, this thing is actually kind of heavy. I'm slightly nervous about putting so much pressure on the side of this uh, eight heel container. Um, I really don't want to stress this seam too much because if this seam goes, all the water's gonna go down and then it's just gonna be bad news over here. Actually, you know what? Weight wise, I think it's actually not too bad. So it should be okay. All right, and here we go. I feel like that's a pretty clean install from the front. All you see is a little block of white right there. You'll be like, oh, what's going on? And you come to the side, it's like, oh, fancy. But what's more important right now is track the pH because that is what we're trying to raise, right? So at the moment, pH is actually coming back up a little bit. We're looking at 8.1, 8.2. So I think 8.1 is the baseline. So while I was running the uh, dual daylight cycle, I was tweaking the skimmer as well. I have it on, I think it's like two period of time each day and each time is about six hours. So it's not on 24 seven. And the reason I was doing that is because um, this tank is really depleting the nitrate really, really quickly. And the skimmer is a little bit too efficient for this tank pulling out too much gunk. So I ran it for six hours a day. But as a result, I saw that my pH really dropped because uh, skimmer is not there to provide aeration. So I tweaked that yesterday and we see that this, uh, the pH is back to where it was before I made that little tweak. It's back to like about 8.1 or so. Uh, so I would use 8.1 as the baseline for this experiment. And we'll see after hooking up the uh, CO2 scrubber, uh, how much higher uh, the pH is gonna go. The other thing that I'm really worried about is how quickly does the media deplete. And that really depends on like how much CO2 it needs to scrub out. Uh, if it depletes a little bit too fast, then I will make this recirculating, meaning that the intake, I'm gonna pull in air from the uh, skimmer cap versus right now just pulling in air from the room. So if I pull air from the skimmer cap, it's gonna make the CO2 media last a lot longer. But the danger is that if the skimmer overflow, meaning that if I turn off the return pump and forgot to turn off the skimmer, all the gunk is gonna go right into the uh, <laughs> scrubber and it's just gonna be bad. So that is a danger. I need to either build in some kind of fail safe or just keep it separate, not using recirculating, um, assuming my media lasts that long. Three days later. I wanna show you guys the result of the ice cap CO2 scrubber after installing it just for what, three days? Um, here. Inception, I'm actually editing this video right now. I noticed that we need to talk about the results. So we'll take a look at the pH and before the scrubber, we're sitting at about 8.1. And as you can see, we are now steadily at 8.26. It has been people suggesting different modification to the scrubber. Uh, one of them being enlarge the hole of the tube to match the uh, BLS size one because the ice cap one, the hole is a little bit smaller. As a direct result of that, the author is saying that the, uh, the scrubber is much more effective. The pH comes up a lot more. But my guess is that uh, the media is also gonna get consumed a lot faster. I think I'm at a happy medium where uh, 8.26, like I'm perfectly happy with that. Before this, the tank was like 8, 8.1. Me, 8.2 will be perfect, and this is uh, more than perfect. We're good, eight plus right now. So I'm really happy with it. At the moment, the media has not changed color yet, so I am hopeful. Somebody also mentioned on Instagram that um, I can actually find bulk media. 
in 40 pounds volume for I think $108 online uh, versus 2.2 pounds for about $15, which is much more expensive. So I'll probably go that route because it looks like the scrubber is working. I'm still debating whether to make the scrubber uh, recirculating or not because right now the consumption rate seems okay. Uh, three days passed, no color change yet, so that seems good. But I'll keep an eye on it. I'll keep you guys posted in one of the following videos. If you have any suggestions on how to make this CO2 scrubber last a little bit longer, more effective, please do leave a comment down below. Uh, with that said though, let's go on with the rest of the videos. Meanwhile... Alright guys, assuming I can catch the Aptasia eating filefish from my refugium, today he's going home with Lin, the local corals mogul. Alright, this is not going to be fun and probably pretty stressful. Ah, oh, Alright, so once again, we got this little guy. Not too difficult to catch, thank goodness. I thought it's going to swim into the biomedia chamber and then it's game over. In the short amount of time that I've had him, uh, he did grow in size and he was really, really healthy. He does what his name implies. He does polish off uh, a lot of the Aptasias. He tend to leave the larger ones alone, but he definitely finished off all these smaller ones. Now, in terms of how reef safe this guy actually is, well, I mean, the fact that they eat Aptasia, meaning that they have an appetite for that kind of small anemones. In which case, unfortunately, in my tank's case, it translates to Xenias as well as Zoas. So this guy was munching down on the blue Xenias as well as uh, Zoas. And it was really apparent when I only have him in the uh, mangrove tank because uh, if it's not him eating it, nothing else is eating him. Uh, so this guy is being rehomed today. And thankfully our local coral mogul, Lin, happens to have a tank that he would fit right in assuming he does not jump down on LPS which I really hope that he does not. Two hours later. Alright we first just got home from House of Tropicals from meeting up with Lin. The main reason we met up before I decided to rehome the Aptasia eating filefish is because I won a raffle. I am a member of her Northern Virginia Reef Facebook group. There's always buy sales and raffle going on there and I just so happened to win one of the uh, mini raffle from the Facebook group two weeks ago. So I knew I was going to meet up with Lin and that's when I asked hey I have this Aptasia file fish that just kind of living in the refugium. Would you happen to have a home for him? So the file fish is in really good hands and now let's take a look at what's in the box. I just realized this video has a lot of unboxing going on. Oh man, <laughs> what is going on? I want two awesome coral is of a Zoa and a encrusting SPS kind of deal. I'm not too sure what's going on, but we got a lot of things going on. Ooh, so thoughtful. Thank you, Lynn. And she gave me a syringe. I think she wanted me to shoot up or something. I was able to track down some branching GSP. Yeah, thank you. I've been looking for that for a while. PS chocolate for the wife and the kid. Come on, man. I love chocolate. They're not getting it. Uh, this is definitely more than two corals. Ooh, that looks like a toaster letter, doesn't it? I, I feel like I got some kind of phobia because this is kind of unnerving to me. What the heck is this, Lin? This looks ginormous. I am absolutely not expecting this at all. I know she has been really generous in the past, but I think we're beyond that. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. This is way too much. This is way too much. I see it, I think that's actually the Zoa I won, uh, as well as this guy right here. All the other things, Lin, thank you so much. Like, stop doing this, stop doing this. I don't know how I can repay you. Yesterday. All right guys, today we're getting a little fancy. Uh, you know I have been trying to combat this rat's nest of wires and try to like bring some order to the chaos and I have 3D printed a dual controller mount for the MP40 and the Vectra M2 does come with its own metal mount. So I just found this piece of uh, redwood shelving that I have laying around, figure I'll just like mount all the board on here for now until I find a more permanent solution. So there are a lot of other things I want to mount, for example my uh, heater controller, my auto top off, and uh, where's the ink bird? This is important, the ink book that tells me what the temperature is set at and what's current temperature. The other things like power brick and stuff like that, eh, what not. All right guys, behold my DIY proudness. <laughs> Once again, nothing fancy, just a piece of shelving I found laying around the house and I pick up some of these uh, number six uh, half inch screw. Screw the mounts in, now them all into board and there it is. I just want to see if I like the idea of having the controller mounted, which I think it's actually make things look a lot neater. Um, down the road, I may try to dress it up a little bit, maybe like a nicer piece of wood that is actually black and fit the whole thing. Or I may go with one of those uh, off the shelf option like from Adaptive Reef, they've been super popular. But for now, this board will do until then. Maybe I can just like spray paint this board black just so that I match the rest of the decor here. I don't know, what do you guys think? But for now, quick little DIY project done. Three days later. All right guys, while Leon is distracted by the spinning chair, let me give you a quick update on the corals that we just picked up from Lynn. We'll start from the left side of the tank and work our way to the right. Uh, first off, we got this really cool 
green polyp toaster. Now the unique thing about this letter is that I do have a straight up green toaster right there. But this one is just the polyp that is green. So I feel like that was gonna make a nice contrast yeah. between uh, this one and that one. Later on when I actually move the Weeping Willow letter here as well, they will make a really nice trio in terms of coloration. And right next to it is a coral that's not that hey. assuming. We got green star polyp right here and right here is the branching green star polyp that Lean finally found. Hey. Branching Green Star Apollo is one of those things that if you know, you know, and you want it. I remember when we toured Ecotech Marine's uh, headquarter, in one of their tank with the Colorado Sunburst and Enemy, they have a lot of uh, branching GSP as well. Ever since then, I thought it would be super cool to get some of these uh, branching GSP, and finally Lynn was able to find some, and she was uh, willing to share the wealth, so many, many thanks. So back there is another letter that Lynn included with this, uh, this box of corals that I was not expecting. And I like it because it looks like SPS. It looks like one of those SPS except because it's like a soft coral so it's a lot easier. And sliding over here is one of the uh, two corals that actually won in this mini raffle and as you know I am in the process of building out the zoa gardens and some of them is actually closed up because the urchin is just kind of walking all over them uh, but when I saw that the raffle includes a uh, decently sized frag of zoas I just kind of jumped on it. So that's one of them. The other coral that won uh, with this mini raffle is actually back there. I'm actually not too sure what type of coral that is. It looks like some kind of a uh, leptos or something like that. I'm not sure. If you know, please leave a comment. We have that big chunk of Ganipora that you saw in like that little uh, carry out Tupperware. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's like a good mix of like mint green and uh, teal green. And you only see it from the side, but when you look at it from the front, it's like a nice chunky piece. But I left it there kind of in the shade right now in low flow, just so that the corals can really acclimate to uh, the tank's parameters, as well as my funky light schedule. Yes, I'm still doing the double day light cycle on this tank. All the fish is totally okay. And all the corals seems okay as well, until I saw the jack-o'-lantern. They got tissue peeling off. Not sure if this is strictly from the Double Daylight Cycle or just like a combination like from having a swings into like now we're tweaking the light and it's just a lot going on. So maybe that was it. I'm not 100% sure. So the last coral in Lin's uh, awesome box is actually this guy right here, Ethelpora. This Ethelpora is really similar to the Gadiporas, except I believe they have uh, less tentacles per head and it got like a chunkier feel. So I can't wait to see what it looks like once it's fully opened up. Fun facts. This Ghani was the pink one that Lynn got me a long time ago as well. It totally bleached out during the dino episodes, but uh, as you can see, color is slowly returning to the polyps. <laughs> so since the last video update, all the coral seems to be doing well, except for the jack-o'-lantern. I did make one change. I moved the frogsmon from this spot to that spot, and it is so much happier. Look at how large it is. So I think even in the back, it was just too much flow. So we'll leave the frog spawn in the back of the tank for a couple weeks and see how he likes it back there. And maybe by then, it'll be strong enough to be moved back to the front, but until then, it's gonna chill in the back. I mean, he looks so happy, dude. So fish-wise, I was getting ready to receive uh, a medium-sized fish, just kind of similar in size to the yellow tank. Unfortunately, he did not come in yet, and I think we may be having trouble finding him, so I'm not sure if that's still a goal. On the other side of the spectrum, I was hoping for a small show of a certain type of small fish. But unfortunately, a lot of them did not make it through the quarantine process at the fish store. So that was a no-go as well. So unfortunately, it looks like it's gonna be a while until we can put this DIY project into actual operation. But hey, good things comes to those who wait, right? One cool news is that, look at this. Neon is completely mobile now. So now it is time to baby-proof the whole house. That's not gonna be fun, right? Give me five. Give me five. Yeah! <laughs> and just in case you want to say hi, here is the flash arrest who's completely integrated into the reef squad at this tank. I may have a mistaken identity on this little guy. Uh, somebody pointed out that this guy may be a carpenter rest and looking at pictures and descriptions, sure enough, it has more than one of those little filaments coming out from the top. So I think this guy may actually be a carpenter rest. I am starting to, uh, go down the rabbit hole of rice. And seeing how I may not be able to get that medium sized fish I was hoping for, as well as the small shoal fish. Hey, maybe we'll look into uh, reef safe rest, like fairy rest, flasher rest, and stuff like that. That may be kind of cool too. And did I mention that the hippo tank seems a lot bigger now? Man, it's kind of ridiculous how fast they grow. And another thing I'm really happy about is the clam is continuing to do well. Yes, this is still the $50 peco clam that I got, was it like two years ago? 
and I'm gonna estimate it's probably about seven or eight inches now in terms of the uh, shell's length. Now, me and Leon has been spending a lot of time just kind of staring at the tank. He loves to just look at the tank and point at the fish, and his favorite fish is actually the yellow line goby, which I have no idea where he is right now. And let's see. Oh, there he is. There's the yellow line goby right here. That's Leon's favorite fish. Oh yeah, yeah, the jawbreaker mushroom will fall the way to the back of the rock. Awesome, right? <laughs> All right, guys, this has been a really ragtag set of updates with like DIYs, core unboxing, product unboxing, etc. Uh, really, really random. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. sharp. Bye. All right guys, we're gonna do it. I am in the process of ordering more ammo crabs and peppermint shrimps.